if you were mentoring a CTO that was maybe a half or a third of your size and they were going through an acquisition, what just comes to mind as what, what you would tell them? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, the acquisition, Google acquired us uh, seven or eight years ago. Um, and that was the most opaque process that, so I'll just give you a little more context. At the time of the acquisition, actually Facebook was at the table and Google were at the table. And ultimately it turned out that uh, Google acquired us. Uh, you know, I think neither Google nor Facebook was really clear about what their vision was, there was this opacity to the whole process that just made it very, very strange. And so, you know, for us, we were brought in to do interviews. Uh, it was as if uh, we were standalone engineers going through the process ourselves. And then they did a team-based code review. So we had to show our lines of code and, you know, a, an architect from Facebook or an architect from Google would point and say like, why did you create this abstraction? Like, how do you deal with logging? Um, where do your logs go? What is the lifetime of the logs? How are they encrypted? You know, how are the keys managed? How do you rotate the keys? And so on and so forth. And it was just this kind of like probing conversation. Um, and the only thing I remember was this was so opaque. They did not want to share uh, any, you know, reasoning or justification for anything that they were doing. And we were just at their mercy. So if they would say, Hey, now we need to go and, you know, we need credentials to your AWS account. So we can kind of like poke around and see how you set up your infrastructure. We just kind of said, okay, we can kind of give you this access and you can view this, but we had no control. And, uh, I don't know if this is a learning more so as an FYI, be prepared for that. Um, these big companies, they get to call the shots. And I think the way acquisitions have gone over the last uh, five or six years, it's kind of like more in their favor. They get the, they get the decision, right? You really don't. Um, the other thing is uh, you can't lose sight of what you're working on and the value you need to bring to your customers. It's probably the case that your uh, acquisition is going to not go through. That's more likely than not going to be the outcome. It's not to be, you know, disparaging about the effort you put forward or the product or the business or the people, um, just the way things tend to go. So you have to really balance and manage the demands that the acquirer is going to bring to you in the context of what you're still trying to do, because it's a very low probability that things are going to turn out. And we effectively stalled all development. We went into strict maintenance mode for about uh, four months that the acquisition took place. And so, you know, we would come in and we'd say like, Oh, you know, the MySQL cluster is still working. We didn't get paged. What do we do today? And the CTO would say like, look, we don't want to disrupt anything because we don't want to change the conversation we've had with, uh, with Google as far as what we're building, what that product looks like. So we'd work on really simple things that, um, were not very exciting. And, uh, I think if, the acquisition hadn't gone through, we'd all feel really demoralized. Yeah. Uh, so keeping that balance um, against the vision, against the product and your customers and the business is really, really critical. 